Thanks for checking out this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. Let's go ahead and get started. This case came to me from one of our second years, Dr. Justin Ewan. And the name of this case is... It's fun to eat things. It's fun to eat things. Usually I use one of our resident documents for the HPI, but the nursing note was so good here, I decided to go for it. This is a 33-year-old male. Comes to the ED stating he swallowed a piece of metal just before arrival. Reports he recently had a surgery about a week ago to remove three pieces of glass he had also swallowed. He has an abdominal surgical scar, but he ripped some of the staples off, and he's been placed with a sitter for safety and taken to the treatment area. Here are his vitals. Afebrile, tachycardic at 129, blood pressure of 126 over 91, respiratory rate of 22, setting 97% on room air. And the resident's notes match the, the nursing notes, and here's our patient's chest x-ray. So we have this coiled piece of metal lodged and presumed the esophagus. The lateral proves that. And so what do we have? Well, we have adult esophageal foreign bodies, all right? So I'm not talking about pediatrics here. We're talking about adult esophageal foreign bodies. Usually a sharp object, actually most commonly a chicken bone, apparently, or a food bolus of some kind. We're not talking about button batteries and coins like we do with kids. There are three main locations where these esophageal foreign bodies will get hung up. The proximal esophagus, which is right at the level of the clavicles on your chest x-ray, like we have in this case. Your mid-esophagus, which is right at the level of your aortic arch or your carina. Or the distal esophagus, which is about two to four vertebral body cephalad of your gastric bubble. And now why is this important? Because 2% of these will have a complication rate, and the complications are pretty nasty. Things like esophageal erosion or perforation, tracheal compression, mediastinitis, fistulas, abscesses, strictures, or false esophageal diverticula, and the complications become more likely with a higher impaction time. So this has to be taken care of relatively quickly. So what are you going to do? I cannot emphasize this enough. If it's sharp, if it's metal, if it's chicken bone, got to get that EGD. Got to talk to GI. You're not going to want to try and move that in and out, up and down the esophagus without just doing the EGD. All right? But what if it's a food bolus? Is there anything we can do in the emergency department, any medical treatment, before we uh, get GI involved? Well, there's a couple of options. The evidence isn't very good. It's mostly theoretical or case-based. You can do glucagon, IV, or nitroglycerin sublingual. The idea is both of these uh, are smooth muscle relaxers and can help motility of that food bolus down the esophagus. They say to give glucagon slowly because it can increase your risk of vomiting if given too quickly. And if you vomit up against an obstructed esophagus, you can have perforation. And I can tell you from my experience, one of the times in which I did this, we gave the glucagon slowly, uh, but the patient did still vomit, but it removed that food bolus. So not the intended purpose, but got lucky. So here's this patient's EGD. Large, multi-pronged piece of metal found in the upper third of the esophagus, which match matches our x-ray. An overtube was placed down for attempted removal, but the patient vomited copiously, and the foreign body was found in the pharynx and removed with forceps by anesthesia. No evidence of perforation. So what are our take-home points here? Know your locations of, of obstruction, proximal, mid, and distal esophagus, and how that correlates with your x-ray. Know the complications, your esophageal erosions and perforations, tracheal compression, mediastinitis, fistulas, abscesses, strictures, and then false esophageal diverticula, and know that the complications become more likely the longer that impaction is, is in there, okay? And know your ED treatments for food boluses, all right? I don't want to hear from the residents and the staff that I was telling them to try and increase motility of sharp metal objects, all right? If you have bones or metal objects, you got to get GI involved to do that EGD. But don't forget your glucagon and nitroglycerin for those simple food boluses. All right, that's it for this week. Keep your eyes open for more interesting cases. Thanks for watching.